afternoon and welcome to Capital Account. Happy Friday, too. I'm Lauren Lister here in Washington, D.C. And U.S. Congress today finally approved an extension of the payroll tax cut for two months, putting off a tax increase for millions of workers. So after much partisan politicking, bickering, okay, they did it, saving face for the moment. But could it hurt their stock price headed into 2012 elections? You heard me right, stock price. We will talk about the political derivatives market a Chicago exchange is betting on. And could it be a continuation of the financial industry playing by their own rules? Listen to this. This is like the Special Olympics for financial fraud, where everyone gets a gold medal, but nobody actually achieves anything, and they keep lowering the bar. We'll talk to Max Kaiser, host of Kaiser Report, to find out what he thinks. And speaking of derivatives, these bets added fuel to the fire that engulfed the financial markets in 2008, most famously, of course, seen in the explosion and bailout of AIG. More recently, MF Global customer money used to trade on these exchanges went missing. So where do future exchanges come from and where have they gone wrong? From ancient Greece to MF Global, we will break it down. And... Heading into 2012, will it be a happy new year for the U.S. economy? Maybe not. Economists predict sluggish 2% growth, an economy held down by housing troubles, government budget cuts, and a lousy job market. But that did not stop hordes of people from lining up at malls and waiting all night for a chance to buy the $175 IT Air Jordan sneakers. We'll show you what happened. Let's get to today's capital account. It is Friday, and we are getting closer to the first vote in the lead up to the 2012 presidential elections. January 3rd, really just a week and a half away, is the big day for the Iowa caucuses. And also, if a Chicago's derivatives exchange has its way, this will also be the big day for their new venture to kick off betting on the outcome of this presidential race. So suddenly when you see gaffes like this one, which is now infamous, you could think about how to cash in on it. The third agency of government, yeah. I, would, I would do away with the education, uh, the uh, <laughs> commerce. I, I, the commerce, and let's see, oh I can't. The third one, I can't, sorry. <laughs> Oops. Oops. And seeing a billboard like this one, you may, you know, pull over and think about how you're going to change your trading position. Because the North American Derivatives Exchange, the Nadex, it's based in Chicago, has filed for permission to list futures options on the political outcomes of the 2012 elections. Now, this betting and prediction markets does exist. For example, on Intrade, this chart shows how Mitt Romney is trading. But what's new is this would be the first regulated U.S. market, the first regulated U.S. market to offer legal betting on the outcome of a U.S. presidential election. Investors could also wager on which party will control the House and the Senate. We talked to Max Kaiser about this, financial activist and host of the Kaiser Report on RT earlier, because he actually founded the Hollywood Stock Exchange in 1996, which allowed people to trade on actors and movies. So he knows prediction markets. Here he is actually talking about it way back when. There's an attempt to make a simulation based on Wall Street is very accurate. We have our own, for example, Hollywood Reserve Board Chairman, Dr. Zeros, who raises rates, interest rates up and down. So that was his experience with the Hollywood Stock Exchange. He also used to work on Wall Street. So I started by asking what he thinks when he hears that U.S. democracy could now be traded on an exchange. Well, there's a couple of things. First of all, this combines the uh, graft that you see in Washington with the fraud and malfeasance you find on Wall Street and in Chicago. So it's combining the two worst elements uh, of American politics and economics today into one wrapper. And of course, the potential for abuse and insider trading is huge. And I think if you have to, you have to go back to the uh, Dodd-Frank 
uh, in last summer where they outlawed parts of these prediction markets contracts, part of the uh, covering such things as terror futures, but they also banned box office futures contracts at the same time. And I think that's a very interesting story. Why would they ban box office futures contracts but allow political futures contracts? There's a story there. Uh, I'm not sure many people know that story. Do you know that story? What is the answer? Well, my understanding is that the Cantor Fitzgerald, which put together a Cantor Exchange, and they spent years putting it together, box office futures contracts, and they spent over $20 million. Mm -hmm. uh, when the MPAA found out just a couple of weeks before this was set to be approved about the emails of the death threats mm -hmm. to Hollywood stars that were circulating at HSX Cantor Fitzgerald, they were freaked out because they realize that this sets up the potential for people to attack Hollywood stars to make money on a box office future scenario. So mm -hmm. stars like Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie were mentioned in emails. And these stars would be targeted by traders, uh, sold short, and uh, then attacked. But it's interesting that America's politicians don't get this kind of protection. But that America's Hollywood stars do. So what does that tell you about America? Hey. Politicians are expendable, but uh, stars are not expendable. That's an interesting point that you, break, that you bring up. But I want to look at how politicians could possibly use this exchange. We've seen candidates like Herman Cain be accused of running for president to essentially sell books. I'm curious if there's any example you can think of where you know, GOP candidates for, for president could actually use this exchange for their personal benefit or to help their campaigns? Well, in 2008, we know that John McCain was manipulating his price on the in-trade market to make it appear as though he was a, a front-runner. So you can abuse these markets as easily as you can abuse any market to affect the perception of what candidates are ahead and uh, thus affect the, uh, how media covers the candidates. And by using money and fraud, as you do in all markets, these prediction markets on this, on this exchange are no different. They're totally influenced by money and corruption, except now it affects politicians. So the political environment of America will now be financialized, securitized, and traded in the same fraudulent manner by the same people that brought us MF Global. AIG and all these other uh, financial scandals will now be right inside the political process. And of course, inside information in Washington is legal. So now you have candidates trading on their own inf inside information about themselves. So they can potentially spread rumors about themselves, make money on the rumors, trading on inside information, then use the profits to buy off whoever they need to buy off or to feather their re-election campaigns. So this is really the death kneel for America in a lot of ways, because you're taking that last bastion of hope that there are such a thing as a political democratic process, and you're throwing it to the wolves on Wall Street and saying, let's securitize it, let's, fi let's financialize it, let's turn it into the same corrupt cesspool that we now have on Wall Street and in the uh, Chicago Mercantile Exchange. So this, I'm afraid, it's going to be spectacular. It's going to go out in a blaze of glory, but this is definitely Definitely got to be the end, I would think. Okay, well, speaking of money and corruption, you brought in Congress, you brought in Wall Street. So, naturally, let's bring in the Fed. I want to go to Dimitri Kofinas and let him jump in here. Hey, Max, we know that from a 2003 Federal Reserve transcript that the FOMC was considering using the derivatives market, specifically put options on U.S. Treasuries, to influence long term expectation, expectations of the Treasury yield curve. Uh, since the Fed has expressed interest already in meddling in these markets, what would stop them from going into the open market for? Or electoral futures, futures contracts for politicians that actually influence what the people of the United States think is possible with respect to who they can or can't elect? Well, nothing stops them. I mean, the scandal that you're talking about is the government selling puts to income. Uh, essentially, Microsoft does the same thing. Other big companies do the same thing. They sell puts on themselves for the income, then they buy stock on themselves so that they never have to pay out on that income. It's the same thing as a credit default swap. You're right, and credit the false swap, so you'll never have to pay because you can simply go bankrupt and say that the counterparty doesn't exist anymore. So, yeah, it just opens up a can of derivatives, but it applies it to that democratic institution, and they're not taking into consideration the assassination risk potential here. You're putting a bullseye on these politicians' head. Like, uh, Gabriella, uh, who was shot in the head after Sarah Palin put a bullseye on her head, she got shot. Imagine putting that now uh, traders all over the world who have a vested interest in seeing these politicians get shot. But uh, Hollywood, of course, is okay to uh, protect them under the bill that was passed last summer under the Cantor Fitzgerald Box Office Futures Exchange. But for politicians in America, it's open season. Who cares? We're going to make money. Who cares? 
Well, Dodd Frank says that betting on assassination is not fair game, but we'll have to see how this goes. That's not the end of our conversation. We'll have more with financial activist and host of Kaiser Report, Max Kaiser. But first, this. All right, it's time now for Word of the Day, where we break down a financial term or concept for our very smart viewer, but just maybe not the financial expert. And today, it is futures exchange. Given that we are talking so much about them, the Nadex, which we're talking about, is a futures exchange. So what does it mean? It is this. It is a central financial exchange where people can trade futures contracts or other derivatives, which are financial instruments, whose values are derived from the price movement of the underlying assets, so stocks, commodities, commodities, etc. Now, it turns out they've been around for a very long time, though. One of the earliest known futures markets developed in pre-Socratic Greece as far back as 600 B.C., or right about there, by this guy, Thales of Miletus. He is a philosopher turned derivatives trader. What he did was he came up with the bright idea of securing future use of olive presses prior to the olive harvest for a fixed price. He was betting that a big harvest would boost demand for them, and this then allowed him to sell back the options to these olive presses contracts at a higher price to other Greeks that were suckers and didn't have the bright idea he had. In more recent times, we saw the rise of futures markets here in the United States, specifically in Chicago, where proximity to farmland and agribusiness made it a logical choice because, as we said, commodities are, are dealt with in this way. Now, although these markets already existed, it wasn't easy to find a counterparty on demand, meaning they were illiquid. So, effectively, these were over-the-counter markets, which we hear a lot about today. But often these contracts were not honored, which was a major problem. And this was one of the reasons for running these transactions through a regulated U.S. exchange right here, a clearinghouse, to clear the trades and provide also a central counterparty that will extend a guarantee that the trade will be settled as it was originally intended. So what you have is a futures seller, like a farmer, that will sell futures contracts through this clearinghouse, and then the buyer of corn or whatever will buy futures contracts through the clearinghouse too, which ensures that everything pans out as everybody signed up for. Now, the Chicago Board of Trade was created in 1848 to help buyers and sellers of these derivatives hedge their positions on a regulated exchange. Again, it was later bought out by the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, or the CME, who we've heard a lot about lately. The chairman, Terrence Duffy, our audience should know very well from the MF Global saga, as well as our coverage. At about 2 a.m. Monday morning, October 31st, MF Global informed both the CFTC and CME at approximately the same time that the shortfall was real and that customer segregated funds have been transferred out of segregation to the firm's broker-dealer accounts. Now, MF Global's customers were transacting on regulated futures exchanges. So, of course, the recent experience of MF Global's customers with segregated trading accounts, where their money was lost, has thrown the entire premise of having such regulated markets into question, since one of the major points of paying the premium to run transactions through an exchange is to mitigate, if not eliminate, counterparty risk. And that is a futures exchange. Now, still ahead, do not go away. 2012 is on its way, and you know what that means. Yep, the end of the world hysteria. We'll tell you how some companies are cashing in on it. First, your closing market numbers. put a picture of me when I was like nine years old on to tell the truth. I have a confession. I am a total ghetto princess. I love rap and hip hop music and Christian music. I thought he was kind of a dick yesterday. I'm very proud of the role that Al Jazeera has played. You know how
how sometimes you see a story and it seems so whole and complete, you think you understand it, and then you glimpse something else. You hear or see some other part of it and realize everything you thought you knew, you don't know. I'm Tom Hartman. Welcome to The Big Picture. What drives the world? The fear-mongering used by politicians. Who makes decisions? Considerable breakthrough has already been made. Who can you trust? No one who is imbued with a global missionary zeal. Where are we heading? State-controlled capitalism is called fascism. When nobody dares to ask, we do. RT, question more. Welcome back. We're going to stick to this presidential prediction market. Now you know what futures markets are. If you didn't already, most of our audience, I'm sure, does. And going back to this presidential one, I wanted to play devil's advocate a little bit because we're sitting here in Washington, D.C. We are well aware here, and I'm sure in most of the country, you are too, that Americans are disillusioned with politics. Congress's approval rating has hit an all-time low. Seems like that keeps happening, but here's another one. Only 11% of the country approves of Congress, the lowest since Gallup began this poll. And Americans are disillusioned with their options for president in 2012. Fewer than half of people in a USA Today Gallup poll say there is any candidate running, Republican or Democrat, who would make a good president at all. So given this, I asked Max Kaiser, hey, you know, aren't these futures options at least a way that citizens can get something out of American politics? That's the most cynical thing I've heard all day, Lauren. You're <laughs> saying, well, democracy doesn't exist. There's no representational democracy in Washington. So let's turn it into a giant roulette wheel and maybe we'll hit the lottery and make a few bucks on the collapse of the American empire. Wow, that sounds fantastic and happy new year. How, how, what, what is this is what it's come to in America, that there's no hope for a democratic election. The elections are already rigged. Now you're putting the uh, potential of securitizing election rigging and putting it into the hands of the John Corzines of the world who are going to securitize and leverage it up to 100 to 1 or 1,000 to 1 or 10,000 to 1, and their entire process will be based on whether or not they successfully undermine the entire process through fraud and malfeasance, insider trading, and market manipulation. Of course, it's going to be a disaster. Well, I, I don't know. I, it might be cynical. I think I might be uh, speaking to some people's desires here. We saw the Spanish lottery be there, you know, Spanish people's maybe only chance to uh, win it big with austerity in their country. But back to the United States, back to market manipulation. I do want to get to that, but I also want to bring in the market maker into this because the uh, CEO of the NADEX said that there is a market maker on board for the other side of client trades, but he wouldn't name who. I'm just curious if you think, I don't know, maybe the vampire squid tentacles are going to be spread all over this one? <laughs> he wouldn't name the market maker because he's the market maker. What we're finding out, whether it's J.P. Morgan in the silver market or any of these uh, traders in the sovereign bond market, they are both the buyer and the seller. There's no price discovery. They pick a price they want these securities to go to, and then they fill in the automatic trading to hit the price that they've already predetermined. It's going to be the same way in these presidential uh, futures markets and the prediction markets. And uh, as I said before, John McCain's camp was already caught manipulating the in-trade contract in 2008. So it's just going to multiply that exponentially. And, of course, all the money coming in through private donors now, they've deregulated that. So you have unlimited private cash affecting these mar uh, elections in the U.S. And people in America will just watch the action on the political futures markets. They don't give a care who is actually running for any office at any given time. And if anyone gets shot in the head, well, someone's going to make a lot of money, and they're the winner for that day. It's like Running Man on steroids on an electronic futures contract brought to you by the same CFTC run by the same Goldman Sachs scum who's been responsible for all the fraud up until now. Have, you know, it's, it's ridiculous. How can they, the CFTC and the CME can't even manage any of the markets that they're currently involved in. Why are they adding yet another esoteric market that puts American democracy in the crosshairs? Ask Sarah Palin, how many politicians across crosshairs does she have to put on their head to, to get shot in the head before she's satisfied? 
satisfied. Well, what, what is going on over there? Is it a turkey shoot for a few like the Koch brothers to make a few extra bucks on top of their billions? It's, a, it's just appalling. Well, speaking of a running man on steroids, let's bring machines and technology into the mix and talk about market manipulation because we have your virtual specialist technology used to make markets, and you've said that this has fallen into enemy hands. Now you also have high-frequency trading, which siphons off existing uh, money from existing exchanges. So I'm just wondering how these technologies could be used to exploit democracy uh, and p manipulate expectations about the president, because after all, this is supposed to be a predictive market. Right. Well, it's price propaganda. Price creates a perception, and people act on that price. And you see it happening in these other markets. The price discovery, as we know it, is gone. There's no supply and demand meeting on the floor of the exchange, and there's a, a price resulting from a specialist function. My virtual specialist technology that I have a U.S. patent on was meant to solve these problems, to create a better specialist system. But it got taken over by Cantor Fitzgerald. They, in, in turn, used it as the basis for Cantor Exchange, and they were going to launch box office features until the MPAA heard about these death threats to Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt. And they, within a few days, they got Congress to outlaw that uh, product. How, how fast does Congress ever act to outlaw anything? They got them to act in two weeks. Because they consider their staff, their, their, their stars, as essential to that industry they got protection. But in Washington, in democracy and in politics in America, who the president is, who the vice president is, that's just collateral news. Who cares? We just want to know what their price is. And if we can manipulate the price, then better for us. There's no markets out there that are not being manipulated by these market makers with the infinite credit, zero cost of funds, and control of the technology. 70 to 80 percent of all the volume on the New York Stock Exchange is automated control, algorithmic trading, high frequency trading. These are not people making buying and sell decisions based on some quantity, by some analysis that they figured out in terms of a long term value. It's all being rigged. It's all game rigging, automated game rigging. Now we're going to see the same thing to the political process, and the results are America is basically committing suicide. And it'll be a spectacular show. Don't get me wrong. This will be fantastic to watch, but I'm afraid. It it won't do any good to the long-term viable sustainability of the United States as we know it. Ahead of suicide, do you think before that we may see a flash crash in democracy with all this high-frequency trading? Absolutely. Now you understand. <laughs> of course. What, 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 you, you, you've, got, you've got people who are looking at their political candidates as meat, as a pork belly. Mm -hmm. And they're thinking, well, Obama's Air Force One could blow up at any second. I'll make a bunch, bunch of money. They, here they outlawed these products for, for the terror futures because John Poindexter at the Pentagon ripped off my idea, the Hollywood Stock Exchange, to create terror futures markets. But instead, they've made all of the Americans themselves terrorists because now every single American can bet on a political catastrophe from the convenience of their laptop. So now you've got... 320 million terrorists it's it, between Canada and Mexico. It's the United Terrorist State of America trading on this new exchange, hoping for politicians to blow up in the sky. What a freaking country. <laughs> what a freaking country. There's nothing else we can say after that, but actually Max Kaiser had a lot more to say. And as he was talking about politicians being a piece of meat, don't you want to know who in his mind is the axis of weasels, not the axis of evil. In this terrorist plot he's talking about, there is the axis of weasels. We talked about that. He also made a bold prediction about what will happen with this prediction market specifically. We talked about all of this. We are going to put it up as a web exclusive on our website, youtube.com slash capital account on Tuesday. So you have something to look forward to. If you're celebrating Christmas, after you do so, you can get back into the groove next week on Tuesday with our web exclusive.
Okay, speaking of prediction markets, we've talked a lot about them. What about predictions for the 2012 economy? Well, according to the Wall Street Journal, economists are predicting sluggish 2% growth with the economy weighed down by housing woes, by the Eurozone crisis, by joblessness. All not so good news. But I want to bring in our producer, Dimitri Kofinis, and Shannon Donahoe in the control room because this would not be possible to really break down properly without you guys involved in this story because despite all of this bad news which we're looking towards it doesn't stop hordes of people from lining up for the coolest hottest shoe according to them i had no idea what this shoe is i didn't even know the jordans still existed but apparently they are the it shoe and people lined up for a 175 dollar one here's one reason why they're, they're like one of the most rare shoes that's come out lately. Like, that, this is the shoe that everyone wants. Like, this one shoe, if you have these in your closet, you're the man. Like, that's it. That's it. So, with everybody so broke and jobless, where are folks getting the money to line up for these $200 shoes? Well, some of these guys, remember, I mean, not all, I mean, some of them are obviously, they have way too much time on their hands. Some of these guys are like street arbitrageurs, right? Because they're... I don't even, what is that? Arbitrage. Arbitrage. You know, they're, they're, they're making money off the spread. They're going so to go fancy, and buy, you? absolutely, they're like little hedge fund managers. They go <laughs> online, they buy the shoes for 175 bucks, and they can sell them for a $300 spread. They can sell them, you know, for $475. Oh, so you think this is a business deal? I think for some of these guys, it clearly is, right? They buy them, sell them on. Uh, I don't. EBay. Shannon, you probably watched the news reports with all of the people lining up. There were police there because people were trying to surge into the stores, trying to hide in the stores. I don't think it's about a business opportunity here. I'm sure that it was a business opportunity for some people, but for the vast majority, I mean, I think that they got in those lines because certain stores only had like 19 pairs. So once you're out, you're out. Well, for the 1%, it was a street arbitrage opportunity, but for the 99%. I don't think there were a lot of the 1% out at midnight in the suburban malls. No, I mean, the, the within footage. this subsection, there's the 1% street arbitrageur okay. who is going to go there and uh, make that spread. Okay, so. we're almost out of time, but it, we told you that 2012 isn't looking so hot. But if you're one of those people that think it's actually going to be the end of the world on December 21st of 2012, which is the end of the Mayan calendar, guess what? You're not alone because people are cashing in. Evidently, Mexico is expecting to see tourism surge by 30 million people compared to a typical year. They're expecting to see 52 million visitors. I Any heard comments? Mexico is actually selling credit default swaps against itself uh, in anticipation <laughs> of this event. They're kind of blowing the cash ahead of the, uh, the Mayan account. Well, we'll have to wait to see how that trade pans out December 21st of next year. This is the last we're going to see of you this year live. Monday, Capital Account is taking a break. Tuesday, for the rest of the week, we have great shows put together for you with the best of what you've seen here, as well as viewer feedback every day. But for now, that's all we have time for. Happy holidays from everyone here at Capital Account. Thanks for watching and have a great night.